the three temptations that Jesus faced. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The second temptation that the devil presented Jesus with, verse 5, Then the devil takes him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And the third temptation, verse 8, Again the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and says unto him, All these things will I give to thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. But the word I want to emphasize is in verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, It didn't say when the devil, Satan, the evil one came to him. It said when the tempter came to him. So another name for Satan is tempter. He is the tempter. Now we all face temptation and we're going to face temptation. It is normal and temptation is desire to have a desire for something if we don't have the desire we would not face temptation for whatever we are desiring it has to be a desire for something so therefore you can say remember that Jesus was tempted on all counts but he sinned not. So Jesus was tempted with food, turning the stones to bread. He was tempted with testing God. He was tempted with wealth and power. So the tempter came to Jesus to feel him out, to test him, see if he could get him to give in to his desires. Remember, it has to be a desire in us in order for the temptation to work. If you have no desire, no liking for alcohol, it could be all around you and you will not feel tempted to drink. So Satan, the tempter, came to feel Jesus out. He made an attempt. He wanted to test if he could persuade Jesus to give in to his desires. It is not a sin to have a desire, but it is when we follow through with the desire that goes against God, that goes against what God wants for us, that's when it's a sin. This same tempter came to Eve in the Garden of Eden. 
Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So it's the serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan, it's all the same. He's the tempter. So you can say, now when the tempter came to Eve, he said. So man will face temptation. He, we will be tested. Satan will attempt. He will try to get us to give in to our desire. And how does he do it? He tries to get us to yield by being insistent. Have you noticed when you are being tempted by something? You've made a decision you're going to fast. But now you are tempted. You desire to break your fast and to eat. Have you noticed how the thought, the desire persists it's it's insisting give in go ahead and break so many examples you may be angry with someone you know you need to forgive that person but the thoughts keep coming back how they hurt you what they said thinking of their attitude that they are not sorry for what they did. It keeps coming back over and over again. Insistence is how he operates. Repeating it, repetitive, over and over. Your mind keeps veering to that temptation, to that desire. This is how he operates. So when we're under temptation, when we're experiencing temptation, it's going to feel like a bombardment, like a continual, repetitive pressing. It's pressing us. It's vexing us. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to feel those feelings, but they're there. And, and we cannot seem to get rid of them. Because if we didn't think about it, if we didn't continue to desire it, it would go away. And we wouldn't yield to it. But the enemy's trick, the tempter, how he gets us to yield and to succumb to our desires that are in us is to by bombarding us with thoughts bombarding us with desire persisting insisting it doesn't go away because he's trying to get us to give in for what purpose so that we are to corrupt us. To undo what God has been doing in our lives when we're trying to walk upright, holy, righteous before God. He's trying to undo that. He wants to corrupt us so that we're separated from God. But how are we going to overcome? How do we overcome the tempter? By resistance. Resist the devil and he will flee. We cannot, we have to have the mind of Christ. We have to have the mindset fighting 
the temptation. Contending with it. It's a battle. It's the it's a battle over our thoughts, our minds. It's a battle over our hearts, our emotions, feelings. We have to defy defy him, defy the temptation. Fight it. Repel it. Stand firm against it. We have to hinder and obstruct everything he does to try to get us to yield. Hinder, be be a obstruct, resist it. That's how we stand against the wiles of the devil. But we have to have the mindset and actually see ourselves firm. Our foreheads like flint strong holding back the temptation the tempter refusing to give in to yield to to submit to surrender and when we do that he will flee for a time because he will come back again but he will flee and then we get a respite then we get a rest the thoughts you're not being bombarded with the thoughts for whatever the thing is we're not being pulled by our desires emotions it stops it 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 goes away we get rest but it comes by resisting to stand against it if we yield if we succumb we're like Adam and Eve they yielded to the temptation and gave in to the desire so Jesus came to show us the way how to resist the tempter he resisted and he spoke truth he spoke the word of god use the word of god to defend yourself to resist the devil and he will flee 